Now, chapter 35, Hopper. Mom and I make the best pizza. We squish and stretch fresh dough. We chop and prep, prep stuff for a toppings bar. Tonight we put out all of Quinny's favorites, pickles, bacon, Nutella. Mom asked me to set the table and fill water glasses and call my brothers. When my brothers don't come, she yells for them to turn off the video game and wash hands now. And we all wait for Quinny. Why do we have to wait for Big Mouth, Trevor grumbles. Trevor stops, says Mom. Her name is Quinny. She's the co-author of my book, I say. That's why we're having a pizza party. Finally, Mom calls Quinny's house. There's them making pizza. When she gets off the phone, she looks confused. Quinny's not feeling well, and she's decided to skip the pizza. But she was feeling fine at Dr. Merkel's office. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Now, apparently, she's not. So I eat with my brothers. They don't care one bit about our tonsils book. They mess up the toppings bar. Definitely not as much fun as having a pizza party with my co-author. Afterward, I go back upstairs by myself. I adjust the pH level in my fish tank. I juggle. I take apart my anatomy model of a human heart and put it back together. I know it so well that I can almost do it with my eyes closed. I sit in there with my hands closed, with my eyes closed, wondering what's wrong with Quinny. Then there's a knock at my door. But it doesn't sound like Quinny. This knock is gentler. Who is it? It's me, a tiny voice says. I open the door and see Piper staring up at me. What are you doing here? Where's Quinny? Piper walks into my room. She picks up the chest set by my desk. Is Quinny okay? She was supposed to come over. Piper opens the chest set. She looks at me and waits. It's not as easy as checkers, I tell her. I know, I could tell. She glances over at my window. What are the rules? I go and sit across from Piper. We line up the chess pieces on the board. These ones, they're called bishops, I say, and then these are the king and queen. Saturday morning, I go over to Quinny's house. Sorry, Hopper, she's still not feeling well, her mom says. Where? Excuse me? Where in her body isn't she feeling well? There are all kinds of medicines to help. Quinny's mom ignores my question. We'll call as soon as she's on the mend, I promise. On my way home, I hear someone whistle from the street. It's Grandpa in his truck. Heading over to the chickens, he says, care to lend a hand? I go over to Miss Porge's yard and lend him both of my hands. The chalet des poulets is almost done. I help put the finishing touches on it. Truly a thing of beauty, says Grandpa Gooley, standing back to admire it. Then we go up onto the porch and let the chickens know that their new house, their new home is ready. It feels good to be up here. If I squint, I can almost see Quinny dancing in the corner. But then Disco lunges at Walter and tries to peck his eyes out. Walter hisses at Disco and then tries to scratch his face off. Miss Porridge comes out, picks up Walter, and carries him into the house. She gives me and Grandpa Gooley a look like we're bonkers to be building a fancy coop for these maniacs. Well, even if the crit critters are out of sorts today, we should still celebrate, he says, and looks at me as, I, as we walk outside. Hopper, what do you say to a donut? I bet the farmer's market probably has a few left. I do not know what to say to a, I do not know what to say to a donut. Har, har, har. Where'd you get your sense of humor? A garage sale? <laughs> then mom's voice interrupts us. Hopper, she's walking up to us. Come with me. Dad and I need to talk to you about something. She looks serious. So um, so dad, so does dad when we get back home. Is this about Quinny? Is something wrong with Quinny? Hopper, did you go onto mom's computer this week without asking? Dad asks. I don't answer his question. He slips a piece of paper in front of me. It's the email I sent to Principal Ramsey earlier this week while mom was in the basement doing laundry. An email I sent from her computer without permission. An email I'm not supposed to know how to send, but I figured it out. To sramsey at wves.edu, 
from Caroline Gray at zmail.com, Wednesday, October 6th. Principal Ramsey, this is Hopper Gray. I have two topics I'm writing about today. Please give Quinny Bumble back her recess is my first topic. She's very upset. Recess to deten the detention is against the rules. My friend's mom, my friend Owen's mom figured that out a couple years ago when his older brother kept losing recess. She looked it up. Please tell Miss Flavio this. Also, Quinny has a really fast engine. She needs to wiggle so she can calm down and learn. That's a proven fact. I know Quinny doesn't always behave. One idea is to make Quinny run laps at recess instead of taking away her recess. The second topic I'm writing about is this how-to writing assignment. Miss Flavio said we cannot do my tonsillectomy book together. Quinny and I want to do this topic together because teamwork is important. Quinny has a lot of great ideas. Quinny has worked very hard to help me with this, and it's not fair to take that away from her. Thank you for reading my email. Your student, Hopper Gray. Look familiar, Dad asks. You know you're not allowed on the computer without a grown-up, says Mom. I do know that. You broke into my personal email account. Who taught you to do that? Didn't have to do much breaking. Her password was password. Hopper, what do you have to say for yourself? Sorry. I hang my head and wait to hear my punishment. Maybe they'll ban me from the computer forever. Maybe they'll take away my playdates with Quinny. Then Mom slips another piece of paper in front of me. This came today, she says, to Caroline Gray at zmail.com from S. Ramsey at wves.ed, Friday, October 8th. Hopper, thank you for your note. I appreciate you taking the time to share your point of view. Quinny is lucky to have a friend like you. Please know that at Whisper Valley Elementary School, we try, strive to be fair and do what's right. I have reviewed our policy prohibiting recess detention with all school staff. Also, after talking with Ms. Flavia, we've decided to allow you and Quinny to work on the project together. I wish you a speedy recovery from your tonsillectomy and look forward to seeing you back in the hall soon. Sincerely, Principal Ramsey. And it's getting loud in here. I can't believe he read my email and wrote me back. I look at mom and dad, they're smiling now. So I'm not in trouble for using my computer. Yes, you are. But you stuck up for a friend and you tried to help. You showed initiative and that's a big deal, Hopper. That's a really big deal. I remind myself to look up initiative later. And about the other night, dad continues, I'm sorry I shouldn't have pushed you to go to the game. I just want you to be happy and have fun and, and be more like you. I finished the sentence in my mind. Dad hugs me. I can tell he feels sorry. And mom looks happy to see us hugging. I wonder if anything will really change, though, after this. <clears throat> Grandpa Cooley comes in. If you folks are done with my grandson, I believe there's a donut with his name on it at the market. There isn't really, but there's a donut with maple syrup and bacon on it. I get two of those, one for me, and save one for Quinny, who is Bacon's biggest fan. I'm sitting on the bench with Grandpa eating my donut when he pulls out a card from his wallet. You're looking at the newest member of the YMCA, he says. Um, look what else I got. He hands me another card with bright stripes on it. Special offer, too good to pass up. A free membership to a third or fourth grader. So I look at the card and it says youth member and it has my name on it. Doc says I need more exercise and I could sure use some company. <coughs> Are you kidding, Grandpa? You could, you just built a whole coop. The other thing is the Y has a junior swim team for kids 10 and up. I know you're not 10 yet, but the free swim's open to everybody. Think about it. We could swim year round. What do you say? It does sound pretty cool, actually, but I don't want to do any races. You know what's good about swimming? You can compete against yourself and against your own best time without worrying about other people. How would I know how fast I was going, though? Well, I suppose I could time you. I'm only fast when no one's looking. I bet you could still be fast when people are watching, Hopper. I really bet you could. And as Quinny would say, there's only one way to find out.